other aliens which have landed on Earth and been kept alive somewhere? The Earth really flat rather than round? Was the moon landing fake? Is the atom itself fake? These are some of the many conspiracy theories that have floated around for decades. Hi, if we're meeting for the first time, my name is Dr. Aziz. I'm a medical doctor with a background in psychology. In this video, we'll be looking at why some people believe in conspiracy theories while the rest of us can recognize them for being bizarre and ludicrous. I'll be explaining all the relevant science with the evidences coming from two different angles, psychology and neuroscience. And stay with us to the end if you want to hear of good tips to help conspiracy theorists to regain some level of sanity and perspective. First of all, let's define conspiracy theory. The Oxford English Dictionary defines conspiracy theory as a belief that some covert but influential organization is responsible for an unexplained event. So for example, suggesting Bill Gates and Microsoft were behind the COVID-19 pandemic is an example of a conspiracy theory because this is being covert, there is an influential organization and this is mostly an explained event. Now there's a good research paper outlining why certain people harbour the psychological motives behind believing conspiracy theories and essentially there are three motives that people susceptible to conspiracy theories have. Number one, epistemic motives. What the hell does that mean? Coming from the word epistemology which means the theory of knowledge. So essentially what we're talking about is a desire for knowledge and certainty about why certain things happen. So when we have a big event such as the pandemic or an earthquake, most of us recognize that these are for the most part natural if unfortunate events rather than a closely orchestrated series of events. But there is a minority who are anxious and often grasp onto conspiracy theories so that something tangible can in their view explain events which are often unexpected explainable or quite simply natural occurrences. Number two, social motives. Social motives refer to people's desire to feel good about themselves as individuals and also to feel good about themselves in terms of groups that they belong to. People who have an overinflated sense of importance of the groups that they belong to but at the same time the feeling that these groups are being underappreciated, this combination can draw people towards conspiracy theories, especially conspiracy theories about their groups. So in having these sorts of beliefs you can maintain the idea that your group is good and moral and upstanding whereas others are evil out there trying to ruin it for everybody else. Essentially the whole world is against us mentality. This is what is classified as having social motives. Staying within these groups can often lead to something called the false consensus effect also known as consensus bias. This is cognitive bias i.e. an error in estimation basically faulty thinking where essentially we overestimate the number of other people that share our opinions beliefs and behaviors. For example anti-vaxxers may think that most people are against vaccines because of the discussions and groups that they are involved in but in reality 92% of the people worldwide support vaccines. Number three, existential motives. This refers to people's need to be or feel safe and secure in the world that they live in and also to feel that they have some kind of power or autonomy over the things that happen to them. So again, when something big happens, people don't like to feel powerless. They don't like to feel out of control. And for those people who are susceptible, they end up reaching out to conspiracy theories that helps give them a sense of explanation. This can also lead on to something called confirmation bias, essentially looking for information that confirms your pre-existing beliefs or opinions. Next, we come on to a phenomenon known as illusory pattern perception. Research suggests it plays a huge role in conspiracy theory belief. A person seeing connections where there are not any doesn't appear to be isolated to a particular topic. In one study, subjects recorded the results of a series of coin flips. Those who sensed a pattern in these random results were more likely to believe in at least one major conspiracy theory. Researchers also seem to be able to prime people to illusory pattern perception and we'll come on to that. So all of what has been mentioned thus far have been from a psychological perspective. But what makes an individual susceptible to these traits in the first place. From a neuroscience perspective, the ultimate culprit appears to be dopamine, a hormone released in the brain which is involved in regulating, amongst other things, reward, motivation and cognitive function. At an extreme level, it is postulated by many experts that schizophrenic patients have an overactive dopamine system. In a study in the Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience, it was found that those who had naturally higher levels of dopamine were more susceptible to embracing conspiracy theories. Additionally, when other subjects had their dopamine levels artificially boosted by a control medication, they were found to now believe in more conspiracy theories and interpret patterns that were not there. The amygdala and insula are areas of the brain that are involved in regulating emotion and the flight or fright response in times of stress. These areas also demonstrate increased activity in individuals who are susceptible to conspiracy theories. So that's the psychology and the neuroscience of why some people are more susceptible to conspiracy theories than others. Ultimately, there appears to be increased levels of dopamine release, increased levels of anxiety and a need or want for a clear-cut explanation and responsible culprit for events 
events that the rest of us accept as being random or a naturally occurring event in life without necessarily having an evil agent orchestrating everything with sinister motives. So how do we change the minds of these people? In reality, this can be very difficult. Research suggests the best way is to empower them with the right information and encourage them to do their own research. In one study, getting individuals to present on a topic that they didn't even agree on actually caused greater change in mindset than the control group. Similarly, demonstrating that the majority and in particular individuals within one's own social group believe in the more sensible normative theory has been shown to be more likely to be successful, e.g. 90% of mums agree on vaccination. Ultimately, like anything else, everyone else can show someone the door. The individual has to be receptive to the idea and open-minded for any change to take place and walk through it. Anyway, if you found anything useful in this video and want to keep learning about psychology and health, be sure to hit the subscribe and notifications button and leave a comment below. Until next time, take care.